Welcome to Season 2 of the Pull Hook Golf Podcast. Here's your hosts, Matt Cook and Bobby Brown. Welcome back, everybody, to Pull Hook Golf, the podcast. I'm your host, Matthew Cook. I've got my co-host here with me, Mr. Bobby Brown. This is episode 29, and we are still on air, so how about that? Kudos to us. But uh, we've got a very special guest here tonight, and we just finished up with the President's Cup, so we had to tap into some of Bobby's good friends. And uh, we've got Mr. Manny Vijegas with us tonight, so Really, really excited to get into all of this President's Cup action. But, Bobby, I'm going to turn it over to you because you and Manny go way back. So why don't you take us through your history together? Well, first of all, you gotta be you gotta say that Manny Vijegas was the grit was the caddy behind Si Woo Kim thumping through Americans last week. That's the most that is true. That's the most important part. So <laughs> um uh, little hi- little history about me and Manny. Um I would say probably started when I was caddying on the the then the web.com tour um for a couple guys. And um we used to, I wouldn't say I hung out with his older brother Camillo, but we played a lot of practice rounds with Camillo, got to know him pretty well um over a couple of years. And then I got lucky and got the Eric Axley call to come up to the tour in 2006 and Axley and and I believe Camilla was already on tour by by that time and Axley and Camilla used to play quite a few practice rounds together more like money games on Mondays and Tuesdays and Camilla would kind of always beat the shit out of him but it came to um you know my history of caddying on the Monterey Peninsula and following college golfers yada 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 I had a week off in the US Am in 2007 was at Olympic Club, which I had been over 20 or 30 times. So I had just reached out to Camillo and I'm like, hey, I know your brother's a stud and I know Olympic Club pretty good. And I got the week off and uh, maybe maybe reach out to your brother and and see if I could caddy for him. So that's pretty much that's pretty much how it started. I don't know if it was Camillo or Manny that called me back. Um but um, uh, we got it going in 2007 and and great. And we've developed a nice friendship since then. Um, and um, more importantly, I mean, I've 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 developed a, a relationship just not with him as player and caddy, but now it's more like caddy and caddy because Manny had a lot of game. I doesn't know. I don't know if a lot of people know that or not, but he was a, a quite a solid player at the University of Florida. Manny, correct me if I'm wrong, but you played with Billy Horschel was on your team yeah. at the time um was matt, matt every matt, matt? matt every yeah yeah, yeah. baba dickerson uh, or had, had he had yeah, already J- james vargas yeah um, ryan cochran jesse mudd yeah and who was and there was another there was another um camilla then, Bennett, Ty- then camilla tyson Bennett. that got on tour now tyson alexander who's on tour now mm-hmm. matt so yeah. obviously obviously floors is a factory and they, and they, yeah, a bunch of, well, Brett, a, Brett Stegmeyer who played on tour too. Steggy, Brett Stegmeyer was on that team too. So, um, so to continue on, so I get to, I get to work for him at Olympic club in 2007, which was, how about this? That, that turns out that that's where I, I, I end up meeting Dustin Johnson, right? Because we were on the range one day and Dustin Johnson was like hitting these bombs on this range at Olympic club. And I remember turning to man and I go, is that Dustin Johnson? He's like, Oh bro. He hits it so fucking far, bro. Yeah, because because I actually I actually qualified in the same site that Dustin qualified, uh-huh. and it was two spotter and Dustin Johnson won, and then Jonathan Vegas finished second, and I actually finished first alternate, you know, and I thought I was never gonna get in, and right and they gave, gave me a call. I don't know how it works, but I got a call. Right. Right. Well, Matt, I will say this: it didn't take me long as we played some practice rounds and got out there where I was thinking to myself, and I'm like. God, I'm a man. He probably doesn't want to hear this, but I'm like, God, this guy is a plain motherfucker. I thought he was, you know, I thought he was a better ball striker than his brother was, honestly. And I thought he was a great, I thought he was a great punter. And I never really thought that Camillo was the greatest punter. It wasn't until years later after being around Camillo that I thought that I'm like, oh, Camillo is one of the best putters that I've ever seen because he can kind of hit it a little crooked every now and then. And he's kind of a wizard around the greens and a genius. And he's super, he's super golf smart. I would say his brother is. So 
So um, I'll talk well, a little bit. Bobby, he's the only guy that ever got down to where he could see a blade of grass absolutely perfectly yeah. with that spider so, move. I'm going to I'm going to throw in a funny story, but I have a brother that's 2 years younger than me. His name is Jeff. He's very he's a very successful guy, but he's gay. No big deal. You know what I mean? He's my brother. I love him to death. But the gay population when Camilo Vajegas came on the scene and started doing that, all of a sudden they all became the hugest golf fans. Like I would be at my mom's house, you know, watching some tournaments, you know, my brother and my brother Jeff would walk by and he goes, where'd that Camilo Vajegas guy? I want to see that Camilo Vajegas guy. So that's, actually, that's, actually, that's actually a compliment. So 2000, 2007 USAM, probably Manny would agree, the most talented US amateur field that's ever been assembled. I mean, Dustin, Jamie Lovemark. John Vegas, it sounds Johnny like. I mean, Vegas, God. Billy Horschel, Keegan Bradley, Derek Fathauer, Michael Thompson. My God, you can just go through the list. They're like, it's like 20 or 25 deep. It was, it was unbelievable. Um, first day rolls around was with that one. We got the, and I was pretty jacked up to be caddying for this guy. Um, uh, we were paired with Johnny Curran. Johnny Curran was also oh, yeah. there played it at Vanderbilt and um, remember we caught that huge fog delay was it on the first yeah. day I think yeah, we had a morning thing. tea time and Manny we were delayed like what three to six hours something like yeah, that we, we teed off at like four or something I think I tripled the first I don't know maybe a 10 yeah, yeah you did <laughs> <laughs> sounds like one of my rounds we missed match play by one shot uh, good job <laughs> I was too excited, man. I tripled. Oh, the I know the real story why you. I know the real story why you tripled the first. Hey, but before I share that little story, do you, did you have the same girlfriend back then that you do now, or yeah. is there, there's been many more girlfriends? <laughs> so I come to find out years later. Well, number one, this first hole that we played, I believe we were playing in the fog, and it wasn't on. There's kind of an upper course, right, at Olympic Club. Yeah. And, and the u.s open course it was the other course the easy one <laughs> yeah it was the it was the easy one we tripled the first time and i remember thinking to myself manny god we shouldn't even be playing right now because we could barely see the yeah, golf fog. i agree yeah. yeah the fog had cleared and that kind of stuff but it wasn't it wasn't until years later i think manny had his girlfriend with me that we shared this story that we talk about i'm like man we missed by one shot and he's like you know bro i didn't have any legs or anything like that on the first hole and i'm like why not and he goes well you know i went back to the hotel room happens to the best of us manny you son of a bitch. Uh, he said i will give him credit. i was young i was young i was young. <laughs> oh, the good old days he, he sucked it up. He sucked it up. He spot his way through. He made some birdies. We got to the other course. And I think with three or four holes to go, we pretty much knew that we were one off the number or we were going yeah. we to take some luck to advance to yeah. match play. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I got a pretty good memory with this shit, Manny. I think you hit the last four. Do. Oh, and I don't think you had outside 15 or 18 feet. We yeah. couldn't couldn't make a putt for some reason i think we finished on par three actually if i'm not mistaken i could no no we finished on 18 because current current made birdie on 18 and he yeah, got in Kern, and i missed yeah, yeah okay and but i remember hanging around the scoring table and to tell you um a uh, uh, little billy horschel story billy horschel shot 76 or 77 the first day do you remember that and i yeah. believe he shot 66 or 67 the second day and i believe billy made it through on the number or by one but we were hanging out there waiting for scores to come in and that kind of stuff and billy's like oh how'd you play and that kind of stuff man he's like fuck man i i tripled the first hole but i played such good fucking golf after that i hope we hope we get through blah 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 and billy remember billy, billy's always mr positive he's like you're gonna get through this is the yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, uh, you, you caddied for you caddied for current on the match right I did. I actually did. Yeah. John Kern was so impressed with my three years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how your caddy career evolves when you caddy on the Corn Ferry Tour or you do all these U.S. AMs or state AMs or U.S. Juniors or whatever. You think you think you're like, you know, everything. Right. And Manny will tell you to this day, there's not a day goes by you know 15 17 years later for me and years later for him now you learn something new every day you know it's just yeah. a never it's a never ending process so Correct. so i ended up picking up i ended up picking up curran and curran draw and curran wins the first he wins his first match and then the second match he gets johnny vegas and johnny vegas was only hitting it about 90 yards by Johnny Curran. And uh, he pile drive Johnny Curran six and five. But Manny and I kept in contact. And I believe I did a couple Q schools for yeah. you after that, a couple, a couple first stages that I believe both of those were near were near Mrs. 
too, weren't they? By a shot getting to second stage. Does oh, bring him back some hard memories well, here. Well, yeah. I mean, for uh, it's all right. it's all good. Well, whatever's whatever's hard ends up paying dividends for you in the long That's run. Right. Really, for sure. It? For and sure. Manny Manny never gave up. I believe you ended up getting some corn fairy tour status. And if I'm not mistaken, you almost won a couple tournaments. Did you finish second and one? Or maybe uh, uh, I think third was my best third. in Brazil. And then I had a couple, yeah, I had a couple decent tournaments there for a little bit. It looked like I was maybe going to do it. And then yeah. we came because we started in South America, the, yeah. the corn fairy, and I felt pretty comfortable out there. And I played well in Chile, Brazil, and Colombia, I think. Yeah, and then we came to the U.S. and it slowly but surely started getting out. What do you think? If if I put you on the if I put you on the driving range with yeah. fifty or sixty other PGA Tour pros, no, it's it's the mind, bro. It's the mind. It is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Without yeah. without a doubt, like it's yeah. it, without a doubt. If yeah. you had to go, if, if you what, would you have changed anything if you had to go back and do it all over again? Would you have a little different mindset? Yes, I wouldn't have tried to change my swing so much. One, right. um, and no, there's not much you can do, man. There's right. not much you can do. You know, it was going to be the way it was going to be. I think. Right. The path. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the mind. The how could I've how could I've had known? Because everybody says, I wish I would have known what I know now back then. But how are you going to know what you know now back then? You can't. So. That's a good point. It's just, yeah, it's just the way it is. That's a good point. So we stayed in contact for years later. I would always follow him to see how he was doing on tour um you know trying to get status and where he was in his q schools and playing this and playing that didn't really didn't you know lost touch lost touch a little bit and then as as his brother went through some caddies and that kind of stuff lo and behold you know he starts caddying for his brother and let me tell you something if you caddy for and i'm gonna leave the brother part out of that camillo jagas is a perfectionist would you agree Manny? everything in his life has to be perfect and it has to be done properly and if you spend a year or two caddying for camilo vajegas it's probably more like you're caddying five to seven years for for somebody else for just a, no, a, a normal guy and that kind of stuff because he's fucking smart too right I would have, you, I would you know, agree. yeah here's here's a here's a funny little story his his caddy was a good friend of mine. He hasn't he hasn't caddy for years. His name was Matt Benardsky. So this Matt Benardsky was kind of a little stoner drinker partying guy, but he's real cerebral and real smart. So him and Camillo got, got along really good. You know, these greens books that they just outlawed and that kind of stuff. That whole idea for greens books actually stemmed way back in the day from Matt Benardsky and Camillo Vajegas, where Matt came up with this idea where he would carry around this level right and camillo kind of caught on he's like hey bro bro what are you doing with this thing he's like well i'm just you know where the holes are i'm putting this level down and and right documenting what the slopes are doing 1.8 2.8 or 3.8 so it got to the point where camillo liked it so much where matt would spend what four to six hours a day on mondays and tuesdays and he would go and level every single green in in what three by three paces or something like that and he uh, literally yeah he literally made his own greens book and then people caught on to that and and what it and it was working and and it turned out to be a booming business for mark long and greens books and now it's all for naught and that kind of stuff because it's such an advantage for for some guys but that's just a little just a little side story about you know camillo and how anal he is and a perfectionist and that kind of stuff and and uh I'm out of breath. Does anybody else? Right now? <laughs> well, well Manny, I, I, I'm curious, Manny. So how did you end up going? Like, what was the, was it a conversation with Camille or was it something that you were just like, I oh, mean, I don't want to play professionally anymore because you played on the PGA tour, Latin America. Then you played yeah. on the corn Ferry tour. <laughs> you made some content, the Puerto Rico open for the PGA Ooh. tour and so forth. So Kind of give us an idea as to what your path was like to get to where you are now. Oh man, uh, shit, bro. I I don't know. I started and then my brother made it on tour pretty fast. So to me, it was like there was the tour or nothing else. You know, like that was like the standard that I saw every time. You know, so I think that kind of maybe hurt me a little bit because I got tired too quick just because I wasn't on tour. And then later on, I realized that, I mean, it's not that easy. You know, it takes a while for some people and you keep learning and uh, and you keep doing it. But 
I didn't really like it much. And so I, I, I decided to, I said that the day that my sponsors didn't pay for my, for my expenses, I didn't want to make a living out of like, uh, out of golf, you know? So the day that that happened, I just stopped playing, you know? And, uh, it, it was tough and it's still tough. You know, I still go back sometimes, you know, and some days I'm like, I go play and I stripe it and I'm like, fuck man, you know, I should have kept going. And then some days I get up, the alarm goes up and I'm like, fucking thank God I don't have to fucking play golf or leave, you know? So <laughs> I don't know. It is what it is, but that was kind of it. I stopped playing. I had no fucking clue what I was going to do. I was like, I have no clue, but I just know that I don't want to play golf. You know, I don't want to feel like this every day, you know, and it's just, and so I went back home and I started teaching a little bit. I've always been kind of like, I like, I like technique and I got a little bit too much into it for, for, for a certain point in time. But I started teaching a little bit and then my, my brother called me one day. He said he was going to do a shark shootout. And uh, he's like, you want to come caddy for me? You can make a, can make a good check, you know? And I was like, fuck yeah, sure. You know, let's go. And I caddy for him. I think we, played with Tringal and we finished third and he played well and it was like a nice week we did not you know we shoot the shit we worked on his swing actually a little bit and uh I went back home uh two or three months went by and I just kept teaching I didn't think that I was going to caddy or anything and then my brother called me again and he's like yeah I think uh, me and Butcher are going to split would you be interested in maybe giving it a try and at the moment, I was just teaching. I wasn't, yeah, it was just lessons. And I was like, I mean, let's give it a try, see how it goes. And here I am, eight years. Or I think it's been like seven years, man. Fuck. Oh, has it been that yeah. long? Yeah, man. It was, I think it was, I have really bad memory with this kind of stuff. But the other day, I think I realized that it's been the same time that I played golf as a pro now as a cat. So, wow. Wow. Awesome. 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 Yeah, that's Good impressive. Job. So, how was it getting for your brother? I mean, oh man, that was a long one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> long couple <of> years. Huh? <laughs> uh, I mean, that's I, that takes me a while to explain, but to 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 uh, I feel you. To make it to make it quick, it, it was it was the best learning experience, you know, in terms of like strategy and how to like how to prepare and how to like plot yourself around a golf course. I, I mean, I think he's got to be up there with one of the best, one, one of the best, and. He taught me how to see shots, how to play them, where to go, where not to go, how to, uh, you know, how to design a golf shot the proper way is not that simple. You know, where you want to land, why you want to land, how's the temperature, where's the wind coming from, what's happened in the previous holes. You know, it's just like he's so fast, man. I caddy for him for seven years. I think I changed his club like twice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's really, it's really, yeah. it's really hard to change a club for him. You have to come up with something. You know, I'm always like, fuck yeah, I just saw something that he didn't see, you know, and I'd be like, hey, bro, you know what, in this hole, we do not want to be over because this and this and this, and he, he'd look at me like, bro, I thought about that 30 minutes ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, five steps ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, he's quick, man, he's quick, and uh, but I definitely learned a lot from him, it was awesome, it was a great experience, uh, we had some good weeks, we had a lot of bad weeks too, and, you know, we just, I just learned a lot, to be honest, a lot. That's awesome. And then last week you get thrusted into a position to where now you're caddying for Siwoo Kim and it's the president's cup. Were there any nerves going on there? I mean, caddying oh, yeah. for somebody for the first time and it's being yeah. that much pressure. Yeah. A lot, a lot of nerves for sure. Um, I mean, if you, I think if you want to caddy properly, I mean, it takes a while. You need to get to know your player, what he likes, what he doesn't like, how he thinks, how he doesn't think, what type of shots he likes. I don't know, even how, how he handles his stuff outside the course, you know, or get to know the, the person a little more in depth, you know, and because all his decisions and all his shots and his shapes are kind of attached to how he is, you know. Sure. And so um, I actually called Bobby, you know, he's really good in, into all this, you know, he can read people pretty good and pretty quick, he's smart, you know, and uh, I just try to get a little info on Siwu because I had, I had texted Siwa. I'm like, hey, bro, you want me to come to Dallas for a couple of days? You know, maybe we can, we, I can see something, you know, at least I want to see how your ball fly, you know, how you see your spin and, and kind of, and he goes, no, bro, I think we're good. I'll see you there. I was like, fuck. Yeah, but Bobby can tell you that right Ooh, off the bat. Uh, it's dead straight and high. Well, and, I, and it was like, uh, yeah. 
There's yeah. no curvature. Yeah, he's never he's met he's never seen a flag stick he doesn't like. That's for sure. That's one thing I told. That's one yeah. thing I told Manny. I think we should, but maybe back up a little bit too because with Siwu is did one of those fry, um, you know, those Friday firings recently to his three year caddy that came in behind me, um, Brian Brandish, and I talked to Siwu that Friday night, you know, and he's. You know, and he kind of was like, you know, you want to come back? And I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm super happy with Troy. I'm getting older, blah, blah, blah. And, um, uh, and you know, and then he started asking me for ideas for caddies. He's like, think about a caddy for me for a day or two. And so so I text him back and I go, hey, hey, listen, I know how you are. And I got one name. There's only one name that I'm going to give you. And that's Manny Vajegas. I don't want you to answer me right, right away. Just think about it for, just think about it for a couple of days, because if you spend some time around Manny, um, there's a, there's one thing that me and him pretty much have in common. And that is a good quality for a caddy is we're fucking happy all the time. No matter what, what's happening, we're going to have a smile on our face. We might be disappointed in, in the way the day's going or a shot and that kind of stuff, but you're, you know, you're a little bit of an actor out there. Don't you agree, Manny? You have to be positive yeah. and keep pumping your guy up. And basically all I told Manny, he's like, well, you got any advice for me? And I go, here's the biggest advice that I'm going to give you about Siwoo. Let him fucking go, right? Let him do what he's going to do. He's going to fire at every flag. He's going to have five or six phenomenal weeks where he's going to have a chance to win. And we, I mean, I'm not talking shit because he was one of my best buddies and he's like my favorite guy out there, but there's going to be weeks where he's going to fucking pitch it. He's going to pitch it on you, you know? And I don't know if it's because he gets bored, but he's got a, he's got a temper and most Koreans do have a temper. So that was my, really my biggest piece of advice was just, you know, he's going to try and do some crazy shit and that kind of stuff that you're going to shake your head and you go, no, bro, this is wrong. But the fact is with a guy of that kind of caliber and that kind of self-confidence and moxie and that kind of stuff, when he pulls those kind of impossible shots off, it steamrolls into something good happening that week. I firmly believe that. And I wish I would have been a little better with him on that too, honestly, to tell you the truth, because, you know, there's times as a caddy, you're like, I mean, I have numerous stories of him, you know, wanting to hit driver out of rough, out of the rough, out of six inch rough, like at Memorial and stuff like that, where you're like, don't you want to say, don't be fucking in, don't be a fucking idiot, man. This is fucking stupid. And he will listen for a second and he'll just, he'll be like, I'm like, you're, you're as a caddy, you sometimes you can get in caught into the art of explaining what can go wrong instead of what can go right. And I've been guilty of that sometimes with him but you know he, he he's gonna do what he's gonna do and it's exciting caddying for that motherfucker and he's he's i'll let manny get into it i know he's only seen it for a week but he is just fun to be around and there's not one guy one player one caddy on the tour that does not enjoy being around siwoo kim because he is a breath of air he is a breath of fresh air for the koreans because he's got so much personality and he's funny as shit too and he and we saw it last week he no scaredy cat no he's definitely <laughs> not scared no can i just say cat. this that somebody with his type of confidence needs to be around somebody that just oozes cool that he can yeah. look up to him. Man, he's that guy. Yeah. I mean, we've yeah. had him on now for about 15 minutes, <laughs> yeah. and he's already just oozing coolness. Look at that hair. How long it's unbelievable. Look at that hair, I mean, man. he's got a great fade. <laughs> he's got it parted to the side. He's got that French <laughs> fade. He's got oh, the guys. Jay Lindenberg <laughs> sweatshirt on, the hoodie. You know what that I is? Mean, That's, I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to be on TV for a week. I got to look fucking good. That's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got the Korean, I got the Korean haircut. Bro. <laughs> you got to fit in, right? <laughs> hey, like, like, like Matt was saying, Brett, take us. I've done a couple presidents' cups. I know, I know the deal. And I was telling Pat, Matt before last week. I'm like, as a caddy, it's almost like you get around there about the, those. The, the it's the best caddies in the world. Really, are involved in those events. Obviously, it's the best players in the world, but it's it's almost like you get a sense of like, when you step into that team room, like, wow, this is different. You know, this is, this is no fucking exhibition. It's kill or be killed out there. And as a caddy, um, you know, some people might take this the wrong way, but it's almost like a, I've arrived moment as a caddy, Manny, did you feel that at, at all? You know what I mean? Like uh, I'm in a president's cup. Yeah, I definitely felt good to be honest, you know, and to be around, yeah. you know, like you said, a lot of the great caddies are caddy for the best players. So, um, at the beginning, I didn't feel it because like I was just catting, but to be able to get the results that we got, definitely, definitely felt good, you know, definitely yeah. felt good. 
Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the camaraderie in the team room and the things that go. That go uh, it was amazing. That. No, it was amazing, bro. It's just so different. We're used to to playing individual every week. You know, we got nobody cheering for you. It's just you and your and your guy, and it's it's lonelier, I guess. You know, it's just like it gets boring because you know it's just you and the guy, and it's there's there's no it's it's more individual, I guess. So it gets it gets right. a little harder. So to have like a team event, you know, and have everybody pulling everybody up, you know, everybody together, having dinners together, taking the bus together having music in the bus you know and and it just it just feels different because we're not used to that you know uh so it was definitely very special it was i thought i knew how it would how it was going to be i kind of pictured it but it, it it was a little better than i thought it would be to be honest yeah yeah gotcha, gotcha. how was that first sure. t-box was that yeah, first t-box that? crazy or what yeah how was yeah your, how were your nerves walking through that little i tunnel? i was I was very nervous. I got really lucky on, on the on the first two days because it was alternate shot. And the way the course uh, works out, uh, Siwoo was going to hit a lot of drives. You know, he wasn't going to hit into the greens. He wasn't going to hit into any par three because all the par threes were the even numbers and Siwoo was going to hit at the odd number. So that kind of relaxed me a little bit because I had my lines off the tee and I could see how he hit driver already. So uh -huh. I didn't have to caddy. I only had to caddy two iron shots, you know, which is the hardest part about caddying is probably coming into the green, you know, trying to get into where he needs to be, you know, off the tee, especially in Qual Hollow, there went, the, it was easy because there are not that many decisions off the tee. It's like driver, 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 driver. It wasn't like I got to a tee and I was like, man, I wonder if this is a hybrid or a three wheel or a five wheel. It was, so the first two A's, that kind of relaxed me a little bit. I'm like, you know, I, I get to see him play a little bit, how he behaves and everything. And uh, that really helped. But the day that I caddied, we, we did the team against Sander and, and Cantley. That day, uh, we actually, it was my 36th day. So we finished and I had like half an hour to prepare the pins and everything and get ready to go out. And I have seen this guy hit like four iron shots on the course, you know. And so not many. You know, we haven't hit a ball off the rough yet. We haven't. So there I was really nervous. You know, I was like, man just get your brother out of your head and get this guy. I know this guy likes to hit little shots and not full shots. And that was like, my main focus is don't put a little more yardage into the wind and a little more downwind because he just spins it a little more than my brother and just make sure you don't make those, those mistakes. You know, it's easy to, cause I'm used to coming from my brother. Everything's so hard and maxed out and low draws and, we're pitching the ball shorter for them to release, you know? So that's kind of like what I've been seeing. So, I just, I really had to be careful and, and, and but I, I was really nervous. Well, you yeah. did a hell of a job. Yeah, no shit. I, I'd say so. I'd say so. How I many mean, points? How yeah. many points? Yeah, three, three points three. for him, right? Yeah, three. That was awesome. Yeah. You he led the entire international team, didn't he? I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which I hate to toot my own horn, but when we had our pre president's cup last week, the guy in the top left corner there is so pro Tom Kim. You think they were dating or something like that? Oh, and come they, on now! And, and I'm, <laughs> but I'm I'm a huge fan. Well, I'll tell you what I am, and I said it because I didn't think Tom. I, I set the over and under on Tom Kim because I wasn't a hundred percent sold on Tom Kim yet. Personally, yeah. I, I was sold yeah. on Si Woo Kim, and I'll tell and I'm going to tell our viewers <laughs> why I was sold on Si Woo Kim. Not just because of the two years I did with him, but I got the great experience of doing what Manny did, and I caddied in the two. 2017 president's cup with him and that was an absolute fucking bloodbath i mean they they basically almost closed it okay so back then it was only three days of playing i believe this was the first year that it was four days of playing if i'm not mistaken it was three days of playing and he got he 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 was just he just showed me something right off the bat where he just walked onto the first tee with this attitude like nobody's gonna fucking beat me on I'm, I'm players champ bro you know his favorite line <laughs> and nobody's gonna take him down and him and ani bond you know, got a point against Charlie Hoffman and Kevin Chappell, which wasn't easy to do with those two personalities. And those two personalities on the bag, Brett Waldman, who's a good friend of ours, of Manny's, who's a little who's a little cocky and knows he's a good caddy and he's not afraid to tell you. But, you know, I saw him do that. But more more importantly, what I saw out of him was in the singles match when it was all when it was all over, when there was just no mathematical way that the internationals could win was he was in this we were at liberty and he was in this match with daniel berger and we had gone through 13 or 14 holes and matt you know liberty and oh, we had yeah. gone 
13 or 14 holes where Berger was just one up the whole the whole day, but <clears throat> you knew it was going to come down to the last hole. And we got to, I'm going to say it was, we got to, so 13 is that signature little par three, that little, th th that little par three right there, you know, that you can see the skyline in Manhattan and everything like that. And we got to 14 and we got a chance because Berger had hit one left into the shit and it was going to be an obvious chip out. Siwoo striped one down the middle. Berger chips out to about 60 yards short. Siwoo hits it to about 20 or 25 feet. A smart play, you know, pin high, pin high, right? And what and sure as shit, what happens is Berger chips in for birdie, right? So the crowd's going fucking crazy. Siwoo's down. Didn't, but Siwoo didn't bat an eye. He rolls in this fucking 20 or 25 footer. And that's where this came from. And he fucking just looked right at the crowd and they're going crazy. And he gave him the old shh. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, whoa. So um, they have some they have some holes coming in. We got to we got to 18 and and Berger had about a 30 footer or something like that for birdie and and Sung and I almost said Sung Jay. Holy shit, what a shocker! And <laughs> Siwoo had about a 20 footer and uh, of course Berger rolls in 30 footer to win two and one and that kind of stuff. But I remember getting back to the team room and I just there was an electricity amongst the captains and everybody else in the room that like hey this fucking Siwoo Kim was was made for that was made for this and I'll fast forward to Detroit this year where I was on the range with Troy Merritt and Trevor was doing TV and he came home and he started to talk to us and that kind of stuff because Troy was is kind of one of the guys to beat at Detroit and he was having a good week and we started talking about President's Cup and at this point unbeknownst to me I didn't know that like Cam Smith and Leishman and I knew a couple guys were leaving but I didn't know it was going to get depleted you know, we started talking about guys and that kind of stuff. And he's like, you caddy for the international team. Give me, give me one name. Give me one name. And and I didn't even hesitate. I go, fucking, it's Siwoo. That's if you have to put somebody on the team, that's not going to, that's not going to, you know, get there on points and that kind of stuff. It's going to be Siwoo and, and, um, uh, and, uh, and that's the, and, and uh, I guessed right, I guess, to tell you the truth. You so. really did. I mean, Siwoo was the man. And I mean, we've got to give Manny some credit here. Yes, <laughs> first time on the bag. It did not go sideways. It went straight forward. I want to hear about that. I want to hear about that. Uh, I want to hear <laughs> about that singles match with Justin Thomas because I got my here. Little, my little two I, my little two cents to add in in on that. Tell it. Take a take us through that day. Take us through that round, man. Uh, well, down two, down two holes quick right off the bat, right? Yeah, I'll 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 take it a little bit before the, the day before. You know, we finished okay. and. Uh, uh they the pairings came up we were sitting in the cabin and they were doing the pairings on tv you know and i was like kind of wondering what was going on see we see who had just won the previous match that was pretty big and uh i, I wonder what the strategy was i knew they were gonna maybe even put him to start with or maybe to finish with you know um and trevor i saw trevor threw his name right off the right off the gate and my first thought for some reason was, I just hope we get Justin Thomas. I don't know why. I just, wow. I just, I just thought you it would be cool. JT. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought it'd be cool to play Justin, you know, he, he was rolling. He won the PGA championship there. And uh, for some reason it, it just felt like he kind of was like the heart of the team. You know, I thought it'd be cool to take him down to start with. I knew it would be a big match and, I don't know who if Siwoo wanted him or who he wanted, but for some reason I just wanted to, to play uh, Justin. But I was like, you know, he's probably gonna say another name, you know. And I was just kind of eating and drinking something, and then all of a sudden, out of like the back of my ear, I heard Justin Thomas. I was like, wow, man, that's that's not a coincidence, you know. I thought that was kind of weird how it worked out. So uh, I thought he was great, and I just I. Uh, I texted Siwu the night before a couple of things, you know, I was like, uh, uh, first of all, we, we got, we got what, we, or what I wanted, you know, which is Justin, you know, and he's got bones on the bag, which is, which is even better. And, uh, <clears throat> I just told him, I knew, I, I kind of already picked up that Siwu doesn't like people that hit it by him for some reason, you know, <laughs> because, you know, I was like, this guy's kind of an idiot, you know, why does he try to hit it so hard when he, when he hits it easy, he doesn't miss. So I, I kind of text him. I said, man, you're a Korean and Koreans don't hit it far. And Justin's going to blow it by you. And you just need to hit fairways and hit greens. And uh, he's going to miss some shots. He's going to hit it in the rough. And this course kind of playing tough. And 
I told him just be ready because he's going to make some pots and he's going to make some noise and he's going to throw some fist pumps. Just make sure you keep your energy. Let's not waste energy until about the last couple holes. If we get to the last couple holes, we will throw some fist pumps back if we can, you know, and, and, uh, and at the end, I mean, uh, we all know that Siwu has, uh, or not all, but Bobby knows that, and I could already tell from the week that he has a very short fuse, you know, and his fuse is like shorter than shorter, man. I, I mean, I've never seen something like it. Like, like this guy misses a three iron from 240 and it's like the day's over, you know? <laughs> Touche. Bobby has said some of the same things on this podcast in the past. So, yeah. I mean, I could tell. I was like, man, this guy's fuse is re. I, I was like, man, I can't imagine like on a regular tour event on a Sunday in 40th place, three putting the first. It's like it's over, you know. <laughs> so I I texted my band, man, just 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 do me a favor, man. I need you to be patient, you know. Uh, I don't know, and I, he probably I don't know if he takes it or if he doesn't take it, if he works or not. But that was that was what I said, and so we get the next day. We get there and every day we've kind of taken like an hour to warm up. He's hit a couple of pots and a couple of chip shots, you know, and I'm, I get everything ready, the pins, the towels. It looks like it might rain, the gear and everything. And I can already tell that Siwoo doesn't have a rain gear. His umbrella is fucking somewhere else, you know, and oh, it, it kind of reminds me of me a little bit, but I've been around my brother so much that I got a little anal, I guess, from being around him. So I got everything ready and I'm like, man, it's, 50 minutes where is this fucking guy 45 minutes I'm sitting on the range I'm getting a little anxious you know obviously I'm nervous it's it's a big round for me um in uh 35 35 minutes to go and he walks down you know and I'm like hey yo see what well, you got a ring here in my ring he goes oh oh yeah yeah I got I got in the locker so I go to the locker he's got this hoodie bro it's like I'm like that's not gonna work if it rains but whatever I put in the bag and 30, 35 minutes to go, I'm like, all right, I guess we're going to warm up fast. And and he gets, he looks at me and he goes, quick chip. I was like, fuck, this guy's going to chip, man. We got 35 minutes to go and this guy wants to go chip. So we go chip and we hit some bunker shots and there's like 25 to go. And we finally start warming up and we start warming up and he doesn't hit many balls and he gets to the three iron real quick and he kind of flares a couple to the right, kind of skinny. And he throws his club and I'm like, God damn man this guy's already fucking pissed you know and i'm trying to look for something to tell him and i go hey see we do not hit one single three iron on this course we do not use the three iron it doesn't matter you know and uh we get we get uh we get to it we go we he's like oh we we'll go pot there's like 10 minutes to go we get to the putting green he hits two pots i pick up my bag and uh, we're we're gonna go through the tunnel. And for some reason, I was like, "Wow, I wonder." See, who brings his book, but he only puts the pins on the book, and that's all he uses it for. He doesn't get numbers or anything, or at least with me, he didn't. And he just looks at where the pin is. And literally four minutes ago, I don't know why I go, "Hey, see, who, did, you, did you get your yardage book?" And he goes, "Oh," and he touches his pockets and he's like, "Oh, yardage book on locker." I was like, "Fuck, man!" Oh, I'm, so I'm, I'm like. I'm laughing at this because I've seen this a hundred times with him. So, so I'm like, so I'm like, you want someone to go get it? You know, we can send one of the assistants. He's like, no, no, I use yours. We're okay. I was like, oh my, this is a good start. <laughs> now, at this point, are you thinking that this is going to be a nightmare round? No. You know what? I, I, I could tell Siwu. I could tell Siwu. If he can stay patient, you know, and he can kind of hang, if you can keep him in there, he's really good. But it's really hard to keep him in there. So I thought, I thought that, I mean, I didn't think like, oh my God, we're going to beat Justin Thomas. This is awesome. We're going to kill him. No, I was like, man, just give me a chance. You know, just let's just try to play and try to get far. And maybe if we have a chance, that'd be great. That was kind of like how I saw it, you know? How far away and, was the locker room and how late were you to that first tee box for that? Because you had to run back, didn't you? No, no, he didn't take it. He said, no, I'm not. Oh, he didn't want book. it at all. No, okay. he's like, I'll just use yours. I was like, okay, bro. All right. I guess you'll use mine, you know? <laughs> and so um, we got to the first tee and <clears throat> like everything, everything normal, same nerves, same everything. He piped one down the middle 
and we get to the first shot. And I remember it was 181 hole and a little bit into the win and we had to pitch it like seven short, like 173. And I was like, fuck, this is in between clubs. You know, I could tell immediately. I'm like, and I remember on the range, he told me, Manny, he said, Manny, too tired today, too tired today. I I, I don't want to hit big. I don't want to hit big. I was like, he doesn't want to hit full shots, you know? So I, I thought that on the first shot, I'm like, and I'm thinking my brother's just ripping that seven iron as hard as he can. So it lands like just barely on the front and it releases, you know? And I was like, <laughs> see, well, we have two options. We either have to hit a big seven, you know, like around high seventies, or we want to hit a little baby six, 180. You can't hit it more than 180. And he's a little downhill wide, which the ball could come kind of a little faster and you cannot be long. And he goes, I was like, I was hoping he picked the seven. And he goes, oh, little six, little six. I was like, <laughs> God damn it. I was like, this guy's going to hit a rocket over the fucking flag, you know? And, <laughs> and I thought I thought to myself, Bones is going to look at me and be like, oh, here we go. This guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it went. And, he went right out, and I guarantee you, I, I don't know anything about anything, but I guarantee you went in there and told him to hit in the middle of the green or a little bit right of that flag. Yes, too. yes, which, yes. Which you, you wasted your breath on that one, I guarantee oh, you that. Bro, this thing, I was like, see, woo, whatever, and then I go middle of the green, just four yards right, and this thing comes out, a fucking laser right at the hole, and I'm like, get the fuck down, please get down, please get down, you know, and he pitched it like this far short from the hole and it just kind of released like 25 feet which my brother's ball would have gone off the green but <laughs> <laughs> but uh so that was a good start you know and then uh Justin kind of put the he kind of hooked one on two and kind of got lucky he he went through the trees and then he hit a great shot and he birdied it he birdied two and then Justin birdie four and I was like fuck man I, I guess there's another level you know you know how I could I was like, man, but well, I, he I player kept telling, champ, bro. <laughs> yeah, I kept, <laughs> yeah. I kept, bro. I kept telling you, dude, just, just let's just hit fairways and greens, man. Justin, at some, I mean, I, I, I watch a lot of golf, and I, I know Justin can get kind of wild every now and then, you know. And I knew he'd miss some shots. He's not the guy that just goes like, beep, he's not beep, a plotter. Beep. He does not. No, on a golf he's not course. a plotter. No, no, he just makes putts and does crazy up and downs and hits it far, and, you know, and hits a lot of quality iron shots as well. So, but when we were two down, I definitely. I definitely felt like, man, this is this is gonna be tough. This what was Siwoo really saying to you at that time? So you guys are two no. down. Anything? Yeah. Was there just silence? Could you tell he was? No, pissed? no, no. I, we were talking. I said, just keep, bro. You need to keep. Just focus on your ball. Just hit the ball on the fairway. Try to hit it on the green. Try to make the putt. And let's just try to have a chance. We just let's just try to get to eighteen. You know. And yeah. she was like, okay, I'm just gonna focus on, on my game. You know. And then um, <clears throat> on, 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 he three-putted six, and we tied, and then they both 37. And then on eight, wait, 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 wait. Can I back you up? Can I back you mm -hmm. up? Did, mm -hmm. did, we, did we pass the hole where Siwoo made him putt? The, the three no, 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 that's a nine. That's the, this is where oh, it changed. An, an eight, okay. an eight, an eight, um, an eight is where I think the match changed. We're two down, and and Justin hits a little low, full of ba fade, perfect, just just short of like thirty yards short because he couldn't reach the green. And Siwu, Siwu did his Siwu thing. It's like three three thirty four, three thirty front, and I could tell he swung out of his shoes trying to get it there, you know, because he was two down and he probably thought he could, he could get it there, but he couldn't. And he kind of flared it a little right, and it went. There's like an overhanging tree there that's kind of a bitch, but he, he got lucky and he kind of went past it. The pin was front right, but it was a really hard shot. Justin had the advantage and he was already two up. And we were kind of lucky because there's like a different type of grass rough that was just right there on that little patch. That's not that Bermuda rough and it's a little easier. And see, we hit this phenomenal flop shot to like 18 feet. And then Justin kind of like got too cute with his and left it plugged in the bunker. And we ended up winning that hole. And so we went one down. And then on nine, Siwoo hits a flare to the right. Uh, Justin pipes it down the middle. And Siwoo tries to get it out and gets it on the green, then hits it to like, I don't know, eight feet for bogey. 
and Justin had hit it like 15 feet for birdie and he puts it and it goes like, I don't know, maybe two and a half, three feet by. Siwu makes his. So it was one of those like late bogeys, you know, like like a hardworking bogey that made Justin Justin's putt. It 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 made Justin think like, man, if I end up missing this fucking putt, we're gonna tie this hole, man. After all this thing that this guy's done, uh-huh. you know. And so I think it was smart for him to make it putt that. I think yeah. it was smart. Well, it messed and with I him could, mentally. Yeah, it, but it, but I don't think Siwoo did it to mess with him mentally. I think Siwoo did it because when you make a long bogey and you're playing match play and the guys played the hole perfectly. And he, all of a sudden, if he misses this, we tie the hole. It, it, it's like, this is unbelievable that I'm yeah, going to tie this hole. Yeah, it's unsettling, for sure. Yes. And I could tell Justin looked like he gave it the, the kind of like, what the yeah, fuck, dude? You're going to make me putt this? And yeah. I was like, I kind of liked it. You know, yeah. I liked it because I, he shouldn't get like that. You know, no, it's opinion. a little bit of gamesmanship. And, You're playing and, and in it's, the and it's not a And it's not a coincidence what happened next, you know? And then we go to 10 and we're two down. And they both hit it just hanging. It kind of falls off. And they both got lucky. They, I, don't, I don't know who got luckier, Justin or Siwoo. They both got really lucky. And they both hang there. And Siwoo, Siwoo put it first. And he was 25 feet. And we were two down. And I knew this was like, all right, bro, we need to go. Because if not, this is, this is not going to be pretty. And for some reason, I told Siwoo, Siwoo, after you make this, I need a big fist pump, you know? And so... <laughs> Uh, but then I, I grabbed the flag and I'm thinking like, I mean, what are the odds of him making it? You know, he's like 25, 30 feet, you know? And then for some reason I was like, this fucking guy's going to make it. Oh, and sure enough, sure enough, boom, he makes it. And he gives it the first, the first fist bump after he'd made him putt that little one. So I think that, that kind of, kind of pissed him off maybe a little more. And then, um, and then we go to 11, which was, uh, which was really interesting too, because it's 290, 295 front, you know, and the wind is a little down off the left and you cannot miss right because of where the pin is. The green is really skinny. And I had already done my work and I, I was like, God, good Lord, just please let me, let me find a way to have Siwoo hit three wood here. I knew it would be like almost impossible. But I was like, I'm going to have to try my best. My own, The only thing I had going for me is that it was the same wind as the day before. And I was I had been able to get him to hit three wood after he had taken driver out and tried it. So we get there and <clears throat> and he looks at me and I give him all the information. And I said, she will just, we do not have to reach this green. We just have to leave it just short of the green. I know you don't like that. I know you want to go for the green. But if we if we go through right it's going to be a really fast chip. Let's just leave it short of the green and have it pitch. And he pulls the three wood out. And I'm like, yes, you know, I was, I was excited about that. I was excited about that because I knew he wanted to hit driver. You know, he probably wanted to hit driver there and run it in and make an eagle, you know, which was going to be really hard. And he hit three wood perfectly. And he just stopped like 20 yards from the, from the green or 15 yards from the green, perfect angle. And I look back and I see Justin has his driver out. And I was like, man, he hits a fade too. And a little downwind, 290 front. I was like, man, this is such a fucking uncomfortable shot to hit. You know, you got to start it almost at the edge of the water. And your target is so small. And you're probably going to end up missing it up there on the hill with the rough. And then what do you do from there, you know? And Bones had thought about something different because Bone said like, oh yeah, perfect. I like a little low one, a little low bullet fade that runs and comes down kind of to kind of where Siwoo was. And then Justin said, no, I, I want to hit a big one, a high one and land it on the front of the green. And I was like, fuck man. See, and Bones uh, was thinking PGA championship where he hits that low little squirting little oh. fade. And that ends up yeah, being perfect. But I was because... thinking like, man, this I was like, man, this is too much. First of all, it's too much club for, for Justin because it's only 290 front, a little downwind. He's gonna have to like take a little off that driver. Yeah. It's such a hard shot, you know. And and Justin said, No, I, I like it high. I'm just gonna land it on the front. And I was like, Okay, I wanna see it. You know, I was like, I, I mean, let me see it because this is this sounds really hard to me. And he pulled it straight in the water and we won that hole. So then the match started. That, that's when was it was that the turning turning. point. Yeah. 
I think 10, I think 10 after, after not giving him the putt in nine that irritated him a little bit. And then he makes the putt on 10 and throws him a big fist pump. And then that's when it, I don't know if that, if that had anything to do with Justin wanted to go for it on 11 or not, but I'm thinking he was a little, role. <laughs> I don't know. I think he was a little hot and he's like, fuck this guy. I'm going to make an Eagle here and fuck him up. That's my, That was no my clue. thought watching it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. And then I got, he will got a, I could tell he will, when he gets a little back into it, he changes, you know, and he's smiling and he's cracking jokes. And I'm like, okay, here we, here we go. I got it right where I want. And um, then we lost 13 with a, he'd see with three putted, you know, but that was fine because we had already gone. We, we were like fine, you know, right there. And then we tied 13 and then we got to 14, the part three. And uh, I could already tell that Justin was like half a club longer than Siwoo, you know, on the irons from what we've hit on the part threes. And I did my numbers and I was like, it's a perfect seven iron for us. I wonder what Justin's going to hit, you know, if he's going to try to hit a big eight or he's going to try to hit a little seven. And the pin was on the left and the wind was off the right. And I was like, man, it's kind of an uncomfortable shot to hit a little seven in here, but I don't think he can get an eight, an eight there. And so he went with the seven and he pushed it right in that little bowl. And that was a hard chip, and and we ended up winning that hole. So we were tied going into 15. And I just told Siwoo, Siwoo, this is this is what we wanted, man. There's four more holes. Let's just try and hit fairways and greens, man, and try to irritate him by that, you know. And so that's when it that's when they both hit a ride, and they hit it on uh, Justin hit it on the green, and they both putted to like oh, and Justin putted to like eight feet short. And Siwoo had like a 45 footer. And I'm like, man, we're looking good here. I thought he was going to hit it like, I don't know, three or four or five feet. And he hit it like seven feet, you know, right next to Justin's. And Justin made it, did his thing that, I mean, it wasn't, it was nothing new. I knew he would, it was like, a, it was a good spot to do what he did. And uh, and then, and then Siwoo, and then Siwoo did his thing, you know. <laughs> Which to be honest, I, I wasn't I wasn't expecting. I I thought he'd throw a little fist bump or something, but <laughs> I was just, I was, right just there. I was just cracking up, man. I was just cracking up when he was doing that. I just I was like, man, this guy's something else. Uh, <laughs> Did you watch the? Uh, I'm gonna interrupt real quick. Did you watch the replay? Have you watched the replay of that match at all? Have you had a chance to watch it? Or are you into that? No. Kind of no. Well, they, well, I, I would tell you, I watched it two or three times because obviously the crowd was, I couldn't tell if they were like in shock or they were booing because Siwoo went around and he did a whole 360 of it as, as you saw. And I saw you smiling and that kind of stuff. But, but J Justin was on the other side of the Creek and he walked away and he heard the commotion. You didn't, you got to watch the replay because he's oh. eating a bar or something. And he turns around and sees what Siwoo was doing. He gives it to like the little, the little I, shake I, of the head. He gives it I little, saw, uh, yeah, he was. I saw a video on Twitter about that, but yeah. I, I didn't see it at the time. And I, yeah, I mean, he I gave a little. Lot. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give you a little uh, interrupt real quick because you're rolling right yeah. now. I want to lose your steam, but I'm gonna give you a little um, backstory. When Siwoo played Justin in the match play in Austin in 2018, and Siwoo rolled through his bracket, was playing was playing phenomenal, took out Gary Woodland and um, who else and took out Webb Simpson. And so we met Justin Thomas in the sweet in the sweet 16. And Justin Thomas got a quick same deal you went through, got a quick two up lead. And he was being he was being Justin, what he does. You know, he's almost yeah. trying to intimidate you with the fist pump. But we got to number yeah. seven there, which is a short little par three. And uh, Justin misses the green to the left and and Siwu stuffs one in there about eight feet. So that's one of those where the whole match can change and all the vibes can change if Siwu makes his putt. Well, Justin chips it up there to dick length, you know, and, and taps it in. Siwu goes for the make and he runs it by about 16 inches or about two feet. Nobody knows this, right? So Siwu is going to scoop the, is going to scoop it. He's assuming that Justin's going to give him the putt. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, and um, he's going to go scoop it. I'm like, hey, whoa. And we both kind of look at Justin and he didn't say anything. And I'm like, and, and, and see what goes and marks the ball. And he goes, cocksucker, think I missed two footer. Fuck. <laughs> so I almost think that that's where, but to me, yeah. when I was watching it, you know, I'm like, oh, this is, and Justin ended up pummeling him six and five. But I'm like, oh, he there's a little, forget. there's a, the Siwoo did not forget. See, knew, and when we walked off the back of the green that day, Siwoo was saying the same thing, you know, he, he was like, that cocksucker make me put two footer. I see. <laughs> I know it's fucking two footer. <laughs> after, after we could. After go we ahead. I wanted to throw that in. 
after we finished, I remember he told me, oh, last time he beat 6-5, this time so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there you go, Bobby. He did not forget. Yeah, he does. He fucking does. He does. So, go to 16. So, so go to 16. we go to 16, you know, tight t shot and see who hits it on the left bunker. Uh, and then and then Justin piped one, you know, and this was a big hole. 17 and 18 were, were wins off the left that are not Siwoo's favor, or at least it doesn't look like they are. And uh, so I knew it was a big hole, and that was a big drive for Justin. We were a little bit, um, like, we, we, we were going to have to lay up, and Justin was going to be able to get there, but the pin was on the right. And uh, I thought Justin was just going to, if, if you hit it, anything right, you can't get it up. I mean, you can't hit it within 20 feet. Anywhere right of that pin, you're kind of dead. So I thought Justin would hit it somewhere left of the green in one of those greenside bunkers and have it chip uphill. But he kind of went for it, and he kind of like kept, kept sliding, kept sliding, and he landed, and it went in the greenside bunker. And I was like, man, that's fucked right there, you know? So we laid it up to like a hundred yards and all of a sudden I'm thinking, man, we have the advantage right here, you know, and see, we hit like a little tight wedge. We did, oh, we're going to lay up. And, and he's like, I was like, what yardage do you want to, what yardage do you want for your third? You know, and I'm used to my brother, you know, I'm thinking he wants like a full 58 from like one Oh three or like, or like a hundred yards, you know? And, and I know see who hits his, his lob is like 95 max and his other one is like 116, you know, so I'm thinking he's going to tell me just give me like 105 or, or 110 for a little 54 so we don't spin it too much. And he looks at me and he goes 90 yards and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me 90 yards you're not going to hit your lob wedge, and you're going to have to hit like a little baby 54 you know but I was like, I guess these Koreans are really good at this so we were anyways we were left with like 98 yards or something like that and sure enough he picked gets his 54 and he hit it to like four feet and then justin kind of didn't have much and hit it to like 20 feet and he missed and see who got to one up yeah. and now i'm thinking like fuck yeah. man ah. uh, now yeah. i'm thinking like man this is just looking pretty good you know and the wind's off the left on 17 and it's a it gets really tight up there. And I mean, she was straighter than Justin. I'm like, that we can fucking find a way to pipe this one down here. We have a really good chance. And she would just absolutely pipe it, it right at like, like this guy hits the targets like exactly where you tell him. He's like, you see that little tree right there? And he just absolutely lasered one. And Justin got up and and I was like, man. This is this is a tough t shirt for him too because he's longer than Siwu in the corner on the top. It starts running out. So when the wind coming off the left, if he kind of goes anything right, he's gonna he's gonna go through the run out. And he just hit this fucking beautiful t shot that started right at the bunker and the wind started taking it like two yards and hit it in the middle of the fairway. And on the second shot, I I think I made a little bit of a mistake because I I was thinking from my playing days, I guess, from how I would feel. I, I, I was trying, I, I always try to see how Justin would be feeling, you know, but I was like, I told Siwu, let's just hit the green. If we're 40 feet away, I don't give a fuck, you know, let's just hit the green somewhere. Justin ha has the pressure, but this is where I make the mistake. You know, he's Justin Thomas, you know, I, I didn't think he was going to hit it tight. I should have thought there's this guy's going to make birdie, you know? But I didn't, you know, I thought, I, to be honest, I thought he would have made birdie there because the pin was kind of tough. But so I made the mistake and obviously see who hit it 45 feet right. And then Justin Thomas hit it to like three feet. And I was like, God damn it, this fucking guy's good, you know. And um, and, uh, and, uh, and he made the putt and man, I lost a little faith for a second. I was like, this fucking guy is so good. He's going to birdie the last two and he's going to fucking beat us. This is fucking unbelievable. But then for some reason, I don't know, I found, I'll find a little light under the tunnel and there was a good story on 18 and see the, the day before when we were playing uh, Cantley and Sander, we got to 18 and he came up to me and he said, I, I don't hit T-shot. Tom hitting T-shot first. I don't like T-shot. And he'd been, hit, he'd been hitting first off the tees and so he told me he didn't like that tee shot. So Tom hit first and he blew one right over the bunker. And so um, in the morning on the range, the wind was off the left. It was the same direction as it was going to play on the, on the 18 tee shot. And for some reason I told, I told Siwu, Hey, let's hit a couple drives. Like we're on 18, you know, cause we might need it today. And this is the same wind you're going to get. 
and he hit two good ones. So when we were walking down there, I was like, bro, you've hit it on the range. You you know you can fucking hug that corner and just hit your little baby cut. And so we get there, and Justin just pipes one dude, and I was like, God, man, this guy, you know, I I he he hadn't been hitting it all the fairways, you know, and he he hit the last three fairways, which was which was pretty good, and uh and then Siwoo got up and piped one as well, um, and and we got there, and we had 81, 81 hole. Uh, and we had to pitch it like, I don't know, four or five short. And he, he I knew he was pumped. So I, I t- tried to take a little bit into account. I'm like, this guy's going to hit this club probably three or four yards fire, farther, you know. And um, so he he thought he always looks at the final number a lot, I feel like. He likes to know what the hole is. And the hole was 81, which I think he thought it would be like a full seven iron because that's kind of why he hits his full seven. And uh, I could tell he was kind of feeling like a full seven, uh, but I, I did like my math. I was like four short, a little bit downwind and a little adrenaline. It's like a 71, 72 shot. And I tell him, see, well, it's not a big one. And he looks at me and he goes, oh, driving range, driving range shot. And I go, yes, driving range shot, you know, <laughs> because I knew that was exactly what he was going to do, you know, and he just hit it to like, he just hit it to like, I don't know what it was, 15 feet maybe. And then Justin hit it and it looked like it was like five feet from the fairway. And when I started walking, I could tell it started getting farther and farther, Justin's ball. You know, when I got there, they were really close, but they had they have the tour tracker or whatever that push it is. And so they could tell who was farther and they say Siwoo was farther. And when we were walking down, I just, I, I told Siwoo, man, this is why you practice, bro. This is what we wanted. You have a chance. Just do your thing, you know. And he got up there and he made it. And then Justin barely missed. And you know that was it. It was, it was great, man. To be honest, it was awesome. It felt good for sure. God damn, Matty, you're a good fucking cat. Yeah, he man. really Matty, is. Those drivers on 18, you are already anticipating going that far. I, I don't mean, even think, <laughs> I don't even think Justin Thomas saw the 17th or 18th hole all week before that, probably. Yeah. Right? I, I don't think that, he did now that it. you Most say it, Bobby. Were pretty closed out early. God damn, I hope he gave you an extra hundred bucks in your check for that. Oh shit, the tour, oh, shit, the tour pays you that week. <laughs> you should tell the tour you get an extra hundred for that. That's like, I'm going to give you some fucking applause. Yeah, my goodness. Your first week on the bag and you're, you're, you're caddying like... <laughs> you're caddying like you've been his caddy for 10 years. No, That's phenomenal. No. What it was it was great. Oh I was goodness. I was definitely pumped. You know, I was definitely pumped. Were Dude, you, that, I, it sounds like got, a good fit. Yeah, I got a question for you. Was <laughs> there was there a point? I know you're wrapped up in your whole match and that kind of stuff, but it's a, it's a team format first and foremost. Was there a point during the round where you caught yourself looking at other leaderboards and other matches and going, "Fuck these two. We we have because there we have a chance. The team has a chance if things go." <laughs> I don't right. know why the, the boards board. were, yeah, the, the boards were not, I don't know if I looked, I tried to look a couple of times, but I don't know why I couldn't kind of piece it together. And we right. were the first match out. So there was no right. updates on the score. So right. I try, I definitely try to look to see how we were doing. I definitely remember feeling like it got quiet there for a while. Like I couldn't hear many roars. So I thought that was good for us. Uh-huh. Um, but I was kind of focused on trying to, trying to, trying to do the best we could on this one and see where he went, you know. He did. Wow. What All right. Great. I need some inside information from you, Manny, okay? Yeah. Tom Kim rips two pairs of pants on Friday before his round. Is there yeah. anything going on in the international side? Yeah, we were <laughs> that night. We were cracking up, man. <laughs> some people knew, some people didn't, but I definitely knew that he did it. <laughs> And I told him a story of my brother once in Hilton Head where he ripped one and he didn't have underwear. Uh, <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> uh, luckily, it was like a, so much. It was, he was cracking up when I told him this story. And uh, luckily, he uh, Maria was walking and he was, he was staying on site right there, right next to the first hole. And it happened like on the second hole. So she went back and grabbed some pants for him. <laughs> but Tom Tom Kim has some strong legs, bro. They're oh. like thick, man. They're thick. He's got some, he's got some legs. Now, is it true? Is it true? Is it true? The third pair of pants actually came from Phil Marburger, who is your 
team PGA Tour representative. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what they did. I heard yeah, that, I heard I about that. someone. They were trying to size him up with someone else, but I don't well, know. Yeah. Who ended up <laughs> I mean, he blew through two <laughs> pairs of pants. You can only imagine how many pairs of pants that that kid showed there's up only, with. There's only three guys on your team that would that would fit that size. They're KH3, Sam, and Siwoo Kim. <laughs> they could intermatch. Clothes. You know what happened, though? It's it's that European fit. We got Lacoste, so oh, they, everything yeah. was, yeah. They had that European fit, yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. That got him. The European yeah. fit got Tom Kim. That's the only thing that got him that week. I yeah. mean, my goodness. That, was. that kid, now, he was the Energizer Bunny out there. Oh, he was bouncing guy, around, screaming, fist pumping. Yeah. I told hey, Bobby, young, I was like, Bobby, did. this kid, he locks in. And when he locks yeah. in, I wonder if he's going to be able to deal with this type of pressure because this is different than anything else. Like this isn't like a big golf tournament. This is like no, got you've it. got people drunk and screaming against you. And on the first tee, the first, very first day, he's sitting there egging them on, telling them, "Come on, cheer while I'm swinging." And my no, God, did it get loud? That yeah. guy's pure. Yeah, yeah you know, he gets it. It, it. It's funny when I saw him when I saw the re, when I saw the replay and I saw him doing that kind of stuff. For some reason, I'm like, what is he? He's a he's a rookie out there and that kind of stuff. And I guess I've been around that Korean culture so much, where, where if if, if any culture can battle be battle through nervous times and be totally focused, I think it's the Koreans more so than anybody else because I think it just comes down to their culture and I won't say their level headedness, but they're very they're very calm. I'm not saying Siwoo's calm, but they're very calm and they're very patient the way they walk and that kind of stuff. So at first, man, I'm not going to lie when he was doing that shit. I'm like, look at this little cocky motherfucker. You know, I was just, you know, I'm a shit talker. Look at this little cocky <laughs> fuck and that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden he did something else. And I'm like, look at this little cocky fuck. All of a sudden he started rolling and that kind of stuff. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this kid is 19 or 20 years old going on. fucking. Yeah. Work. He knows he belongs. Right. It's official. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm all in now. You I'm know, uh, 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 Peppa said that before the week, Peppa said something like on the bus, like he reminded him a little bit about Sergio Garcia and everyone was, mm -hmm. and everyone was like, come on, bro, slow down, you know, calm down. And then as the week went by, everybody was like, man, he's looking more and more like Sergio Garcia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the couple well, of weeks leading up to his win, I'm like, Bobby, this kid uh, only missed it. winning twice before yeah. that because of the standpoint that he didn't play great on Thursday and Friday. Like yeah. he showed up on Sunday and goes out shooting 63, 64s. And yeah. when you watch him, he doesn't miss shots. Like yeah. he doesn't miss putts and he doesn't miss shots. And when he you see that amazing. under pressure, yeah. You're like, yeah. hang on a second. Like the last time I've seen this kind of stuff and I hate to even. It's one of those guys name. that hits, it was one of those guys that hits this cur big curlers, you know, that are hard to like time and like hit the right speed and everything. And it's like, they have five feet to go and it's like, he knows they're going in. You know? The last so person like, that I can remember who's made putts like that under deep pressure is Tiger. Yeah. I know that's going to be crazy, but yeah, man. he makes, uh, when we were in that match, I, he hit two iron in there, two iron. He had like 240. I was like, and and we were way down there in the gazebos down there in the park. Yeah, I, I was like, I was like, fuck, man. I think we're going to lose this one, you know? Right. You know? And all see was like, where Tom Kim? Where Tom Kim? And I was like, I think, I think, I was like, I was like, I think I see him now. I was like, I was like, bro, I think I see his ball in the green, like, 45 feet from the hole you know because i was looking to the trees because i heard he hit i was like he's like where's tom kim where's tom kim i'm like i think i see his ball 45 feet and then we're walking up and he goes manny tom kim close man because <laughs> he was like 50 feet you know you know what i really enjoyed was when tom rolled up the putt in and that kind of stuff is is when you talk about Siwoo and the short fuse and the temper and everything like that. But now after being with him for a week, he's really just a big kid inside, isn't he? Yes. Like, he's a kid. And he's like, don't leave me out of the hug. And he's running around. He's a kid. He's, he's a and, kid, man. And he's that kid. kind of stuff. And, and uh, well, Matt, let's be honest. The supposed, the supposed 15 and a half to two and a half point bloodbath never took place because it got, it was a little exciting there for Sunday where there was. Yeah. <laughs> Where there was a breath of fresh air for the internationals and i know you know social media all the live guy all the live paid social media guys were taking their pot shots at cam at cam not being there and and well who else and 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 usti and obviously obviously to me cam and waco were the ones that were 
were the ones that could have made a big difference. Um, Abe Answer, not a lot of people know. You, you remember Manny, he WD'd, at San, he WD'd at San Antonio, hurt his back. He hasn't been the same since. He hasn't been playing um, good golf at all. Gracie, I mean, I love Brendan Grace to death, but his his time has come, his time has come and gone. And I hate to say it because it could probably pop up and win two live events, but Leash is, Leash well, he already won one. What, what, yeah, no, no. And I was getting to Mark Leishman. Leash has ah, been on gotcha. form and that kind of stuff, you know? So I think, you know, and you remember I was telling you when we were going over the picks and that kind of stuff, because I'm a huge Sebastian Munoz fan, right? Because if you get paired with Sebastian Munoz, you want to talk about a guy that's not a fucking scaredy cat. And I said it last week, I go, Sebastian Munoz, it could be 61 or it could be 76. You never know what you're going to get, he but you're going to get one swings thing. It. This, this fucking guy is going after every fucking flag. Because once that guy he, played amazing. Yeah, he's, he's, no, he's no, these Latinos are not fucking scared, man. This, this new breed you of know, Latinos, they're not you scared. You know, Jose, Jose, Jose told me all week, I guarantee you, sir. Uh, see who Kim is from Latin America. I would keep telling you that. I guarantee you that guy's from Latin America. That's funny. I don't have anything disappointing to say about the international team. I think they, they, you guys had even losing, nobody likes losing, but you guys had to come back into that team room and you had to be super pumped up and super jacked up with the. Performance. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was it was like a bittersweet, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was like yeah. a bittersweet because it looked like we were going to get smashed. You know, it was a two. Yeah, you know, a two against those guys. I mean, they're yeah. slack. You know, every yeah. match they put up is hard, and you're like, I mean, fuck, they're gonna finish this by by Saturday. You know, that's so to to be able to kind of kind of get back and 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 actually for a second maybe make make it look like there was a chance. I, I thought it was, that was exciting. Great. It was really. Yeah, exciting. I mean, yeah, it's Can easier I... for you for if you see it on TV, but when you're out there, yeah. you kind of don't know exactly what's going on because you don't know who missed the little putt, who did this. True. But my brother told me, then I talked with him. I was like, "Hey, how how was it? How did it look?" And he said, "Man, at like two thirty, it looked like there was a chance." I was like, "What? There was a chance?" Yeah. You know? He's like, "Yeah, man, there was a chance." I was like, "Wow." Hey, had to had to be pretty had to be pretty special having your brother in the team room there as an assistant captain yeah. too. I'm assuming yeah. he's gonna be. I'm assuming he's in grooming stages of possibly being in talks in future years as being a a captain with his personality and that kind of stuff. I don't know if you agree with that. I guess that's just one of my crazy Bobby Brown he, theories. Yeah, I think. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm biased, but I, yeah, I don't. Know. I don't know what. Captain. I don't know. Yeah, I think he'd be really good. I don't know what the credentials to be one or how it works or how do they pick this, but yeah, I mean, you know how he is, man. You know, he's yeah. just all Perfect. in. So yeah. no stone, um, unturned. no stone unturned. Hey, um, yeah. uh, Matt, can I go into the Bobby Brown disappointments of the week? This is my sh here's the shit part of the show right here, man. This is what we do. <laughs> you got it. This man. is why we get and then three thousand views on YouTube and not forty eight anymore. The, this is it. <laughs> but first and foremost, the big I'm going to go to both teams. Biggest disappointment of the week. I saw it coming. If you watched, you were busy. Were you got you were busy working, Matt? You were busy working. Scotty Scheffler. For oh, some I knew you were going there. Was Shawnee Scheffler for some reason every night closed the fucking driving range? So what does that tell a caddy? Something ain't right. Right. Because, <laughs> because Manny will tell you these guys, these players, they treat it like a regular thing, but they have so much time. They have to go to these dinners and they have to do press conferences. And there's just like, it's 11 o'clock at night. They're probably wired tired, but he shut the fucking driving range and the putting green down all week. So, so something was not, you know, I'm, I, I love Ted Scott and that kind of stuff, but some caddies get jealous of other caddies being so successful or being in the right place at the right time. I'm that guy. I'll admit it. I'm that guy. <laughs> and I think Teddy, Manny, you don't have to agree with me. I think Teddy's head has got a little bit like this a little bit. I don't know. That's my, that's my own opinion. So he gets an F he failed for the week mm. to me. Scotty Scheffler, if I had to, if I had to, I mean, he didn't get a point. I don't want to say, you know, I'm American USA through and through, but that experience I had in 2017, man, it's a different, and I've been in the other locker room before. It's a different vibe with the internationals. They're just all, they're all bros. And I'm sure the American teams now compared to the ones that I used to do with like Tiger and Stuart Singh and Furyk and that kind of stuff, who weren't the most bubbly personalities like the Koreans or the Latinos or, or something like that. But the only thing I was bummed about, and, and I could be, it's so easy to be an armchair quarterback, isn't it? Like the first match that Trevor, 
that that Trevor threw out with Sung Jay and Corey Connors kind of caught me off guard. And I'll tell you the reason why I think it caught me off guard is because here's your two of your better ball strikers on that team, right? That's probably number one and number two ball striker right yeah. there. But neither one of them are known for being a great putter. So I thought to myself, man, you got to have one great ball striker with one great putter. That was my that was my first thing that I was going through. Like I'm some fucking going to be some captain or genius or something like that and be able to 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 pick a yeah. team. But I was I was bummed about that. And, and the only two bummed out things were were, you know. Corey Connors, if you if you watch him play 1836, 54, 72 holes of golf, the guy doesn't fucking miss a golf shot. He misses like fucking yeah. one out of fucking 20 golf shots. Which is shocking like, to me. Yeah, it really I know. Is. And, but it's you that know, little draw. It's I tough know, to control, but, but he does. But when you think about it, a guy like that who hits it so good, huh, Manny, what, he should win every year, right? And should almost yeah. win win twice a year if it wasn't for the putter and and so that was a, a little disappointing that he had that week and he was probably a little nervous the one i could sense was the most nervous or felt a little bit out of place the most and he's a great guy was probably taylor pendrith i think he never looked yeah. he never looked comfortable but but you know i'm watching two or three holes and then i'm watching the rest on replay and that kind of stuff and he well, just I, I think i think he was probably surprised that he was picked you know to be honest you know he wasn't expecting it and when you're not expecting it and all of a sudden you get picked your yeah, pressure uh, has to just you know like yeah yeah that's a yeah, good yeah, point yeah. if i yeah. got called out right now yeah i'd play too yeah what would you do? Walk <laughs> yeah. I, I'd probably go 79. I might. No, I, I feel like driving wise, I'd be OK. As yeah. soon as I got within about 50 yards. Oh, man, my God, was I, were... I would be laying sod over the yeah. every <laughs> single shot that I'd have. Uh, yeah. It might take oh, me yeah. five or six shots just to get onto that goddamn green. Man, Bro, some, of those, some of those shots i was like i'm so fucking happy i don't have to hit this fucking shot right here manny you know what i was thinking it's a very lonely about... place when you hit those you're, shots sorry you're, about talking, it. you're talking about on that day it was like 45 minutes 50 minutes he was not there 40 minutes 45 minutes 40 minutes you know what i think to myself i think that c Wu had been in that situation before and he did it on purpose so he wouldn't come out an hour, oh, yeah. hour 10 minutes ahead of time and get all worked up and get into the moment and get yeah and get, get nerves going you know i think yeah, he was, that, yeah that he's was smart man he's not dumb <laughs> no yeah. he, he's no he's fucking far from dumb he's definitely far yeah. from dumb. matt you got i, any, I, I, I only have one, accurate yeah i, I only have one accurate. last thing and you, once again i want to know if manny was in person for the sung jay gangnam style oh. I mean, yeah. my God, was he bouncing around that floor? That and there was, was a sick. lot of people around. Him. That was sick, man. That was my. That he really was had probably, it. That was probably one of my favorite parts. Of I mean, he was that sliding was, across the floor. I was there, you know. I'd had a couple of drinks, and I yeah. looked, and I looked couple. to the side, and I was like, "Who the fuck is that, man?" You know? and I was like, "No fucking way, that song Jay is, man." I was like, "Let's go, dude." Yeah. I was. Actually... I got it. I got to tell you, in that 2019 President's Cup, where the internationals almost took it down, it never got released to the media. But Abe Answer had this sneaky video of Sung Jay where everybody's just fucking everybody's just hammered on Sunday night, Matt, you need to know when, after the whole thing's over and, and the dust has settled, the two team rooms come together into oh, one yeah. and they just, I mean, get everybody was hammered. around. Yeah. They just get, yeah. I, I mean, people are stumbling over. I mean, the only missing, the, the only thing missing, and I'm just going to say this was Dustin. And, <laughs> and get you energized. Get you, get AJ you going. And, and the shenanigans. <laughs> makes you drink more. <laughs> yeah. It makes you drink more. It makes you go to the bathroom a lot. Um, uh, but Abe Answer had a sneaky video of Sung Jay just sitting there during this party, being Sung Jay, right? Very shy, very to himself, and that kind of stuff, where he throws on those sunglasses and he busted out the same thing, too. And that never Damn, got released Sung to the Jay. social media. But oh, it, it needed to. It really yeah. needed to because my God, did that. that put a smile on my face? I must have watched that shit 40 times. Uh, 40 times. I'm saying my little my my five year old my nine year old little boy they couldn't get enough they're like oh dad he's a he's a pretty good dancer dad he's a pretty good dancer and I go look that now was and awesome. you can see he was you can see he was getting embarrassed like he tried to stop once and he started <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 I think Gangnam like Style is making a comeback now because I of Sunday like yeah I think I he did it like two or three times Sunday yeah, for the yeah night. I, Thought I saw Joe Brown night, there. two to three times. <laughs> yeah, they put this. Yeah, it wasn't once. They put the song like two or three times. Oh my they, god! They were, everybody was like, "All right, come on, Sanjay, let's do it again, bro." That's amazing. Well, all I can say to kind of wrap this all up is that 
your international team is Ooh. young and yeah. it's looking good for future president's cups. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, if these guys, when I'm talking about these guys, when Tom Kim, all of a sudden, yeah, he gets a little bit uh, more. I mean, I don't know how much more moxie you can really get, kind yeah. of that it factor, because he kind of had it this time, but he was still he fell a little bit short in some of the matches, and I don't think he's going to in the future. Like that was more of getting comfortable with everything, and I mean, he turned it on towards the end. He ended up with two full points, which now Bobby Brown, uh, per our last ball. podcast, he owes me one hundred pennies. I thought it was a thousand. <laughs> I had to go back. Back to the tape. I, never been I had to look it up. I looked it up, and my God, were you right? It was a hundred pennies, and I That's was like, "Shit!" I just. Get- I I'll just put a wager on my house, and uh, yeah, no, that's not going to work out so well. So, well, uh, okay. but anyway. I got two. I got. I got one more. I got one more thing I got to ask Manny. I okay. think he passed the test. Are you probably caddying for him in Vegas next? In Vegas, right? You fucking better be, Manny. He yeah, will. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, he he said he said keep He's going for Vegas. So yeah, I guess you never know. I guess yeah. yeah so yeah, but no, Manny. Yeah. You, now you really have to do for caddying for this guy one time and yeah. yet the shit that you were pulling and yeah. the confidence yeah. that you oozed the thing is yeah. with a very confident guy like siwu who is yeah. player's champ bro <laughs> you gotta ooze coolness and you ooze coolness that guy, that guy, got, that guy just, cracks me up man he's so funny man. He's so, he cracks me up dude. i mean well, how, how can you counteract Players champ, bro, with coolness. That's how you counteract it. I play with champ, bro. I mean, the shit that you you were telling him, I'm sitting there going, holy shit. Like, I I did this with Bobby the first time we had Bobby on. And this is how he became a co-host. I was like, holy shit. Like, if you were caddying for me, I might have had a shot. So funny when you when we all make fun of him because he always says that when you try to pull a club out of his head. He's like, I players champ, bro. I was sharing this story, this story with Troy Merritt. I was sharing this story with Troy Merritt where I was trying to talk Troy Merritt out of a shot or something like that. You know what he did? He turned to me and he looked, he goes, I barbasol champ, bro. <laughs> and that's that's where we got ended. Manny, thank you so much for your time, man. I know we went a bit long, kind of right. like we normally do, but my goodness, Manny, you are an awesome guest, man. And no, uh, thanks, congratulations. Thanks to you, man. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, Bobby. You gotta hey, As you're really usual. gonna do some cat you're you're really gonna do some catting next week in Vegas because you gotta keep the boss out of those fucking casinos. That's your big job next week. Good there luck. There you dude. go. Good <laughs> luck there, Manny. <laughs> Thanks, Manny. Man. Thanks for your time. Thanks, boys. Thanks, Thank Manny. You, man. Have we'll a good see one. We'll, we'll see, we'll see you next week with the Las Vegas update. <laughs> yeah, Are go. you gonna go? You're gonna be there, right? <laughs> Come on, bro. I'm comped at the Aria. I work for Troy Merritt. I am barricading myself. Oh, gosh. Do I have to Do I have to make the drive out. up from Scottsdale? Why don't oh, you? Oh, boy. Yeah. I might as well. I, I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who's got a guy who can get you free tickets, and they're both on this show right here. <laughs> My boy, Brian Hawthorne. He's the GM at uh, TVC yeah. Sutherland. Let's head on. Hey, Bobby, where, Let's Bobby, go. Bobby, where are you staying? Where are you staying, I, bro? I, no, uh, Troy's an MGM. Yeah. Uh, he's an MGM. Oh, yeah. Uh, I got the yeah, full yeah, aria. Yeah. Who, the, who's, the who can order a cot that I can sleep on? There? I don't. Bobby, hey, I, told I don't you snore. That not, it's too early in the year for me to start to, to start saying with Mike again and his bottle of Tito's and everything. Yeah, that's like that. true. So, so if if you need a place to stay, you come stay with me. All right, perfect. Seriously, the invite's there. You let me know. Awesome. Hey, it's <laughs> late on the God. East Coast. I got to get to bed. Absolutely, All right, it's boys. late. All right, Take have a good one. Thanks Bye. again. Later. Later. Thank you for tuning in to Season 2 of the Pull Hook Golf Podcast. Make sure to hit subscribe and go to www.pullhookgolf.com for more information.